How you doing, everybody? It's James Larson from 94.1 KRNA, and welcome to another episode of Craft 101. Today we are drinking a Supa Dippa Sumo, a double Indian pale ale. I've got to bring in my 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 guest host here, if you will, my co-host, and I've got Drew Knutson from the Mellow Mushroom and Hello, Kirk everybody. Hayden, a couple of beer aficionados. So talk about this beer. First off, Drew, did, did I say it right? Uh, yeah, you kind of messed it up, James, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a DIPA. Uh, that's an acronym out there. You know how we love acronyms. Yes, the double IPA or an imperial IPA. The double and imperial means the same thing in the craft world. It just means it's higher in alcohol content. Uh, but yeah, the Supa Somo from Toppling Goliath, an Iowa brewery here in Iowa that's really, really, really famous and, and gaining a lot of the uh, notoriety outside of Iowa. Yeah, and Kirk, we'll put you on the spot. You were the one that said, this is the beer I want to try this week. So is this one of your favorites? Why did you choose the Supa Dippa Sumo? <laughs> 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 it doesn't flow off the tongue like no, Bud Light, does right? It, James, yeah, it no. does it. Um, you know, I think it's ju- it's just excellent. I picked up uh, I, I, like a six pack of Bombers, and uh, just I think it's excellent. They have a King Sioux. They just do a really nice job with their double IPAs up there, and uh, as they do with all their beers, uh, Pseudo Sioux is probably uh, the most famous, I think, out of their beers. The Golden and, Nugget uh, yeah, is another good Golden one. Nugget. Um, but no, I think it's an excellent double IPA. Uh, not too boozy, which is kind of where I go off the cliff a little bit when it's a little too boozy. But um, no, they do a really nice job with it. So you mentioned the word bomber, and we're going to segue because on this show, I really wanted to talk about glassware. And you mentioned Bud Light for years. I was a Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light guy. When I order a draft of that, I know what I'm going to get. It's going to come into a glass Similar to this one right here, this pint glass, but we have other glasses here. And uh, Drew, I want you to talk about that. In the craft beer world, uh, not all the glasses are the same, and I think people could be a little surprised when they order a certain beer and get a certain glass. Yeah, just like our flavor in craft beer, glassware is never going to be uniform nowadays. So depending on the bar, depending on the franchise, uh, the mom and pop, if you will, the tap room that you go to, everybody's going to have a little different style of glass. It really comes down down to ounces. We understand that certain beers are going to be poured in certain ounces. So for a DIPA, for a double IPA, you're always going to get less alcohol and you have to expect that. You're not going to want to drink two glasses of of 8% alcohol like you do a 5% alcohol. So that's the, this this little glass right there, that that one there is uh, called a Belgium style water glass. Um, uh, I I think customers are used to calling it maybe a tulip glass. Uh, but the, uh, that one there, uh, we serve it actually in a goblet. We don't have an example today, but in, in, a, in a big rocked g- goblet glass. Looks like w- uh, what Jesus drank out of it. <laughs> right. Well. And, and yeah, so um, it allows the bartender not to overpour. So uh, you're usually going to get around that 10 sure. ounces of beer when you order a, a, high, a beer higher in alcohol content. Now, Kirk, you, uh, for years, we've been friends for a long time. You were always a Bud Light guy. Mm-hmm. When you first started getting into this craft beer, were you a little surprised at some of the glasses that the beers were served in? Right. I think your first reaction is, you know, I'm used to getting the Bud Light and the 16-ounce pint glass, and, you know, it gets sat down in front of you. And then you order that double IPA, and they bring this glass over, and the first reaction is, geez, I, I kind of got ripped off here. Right. I mean, I paid six, seven, eight bucks for that glass of beer, and you gave me 10, 12, 13 ounces? Yeah. What's up? But at, at the end of the day, you just drink it slower, um, and it's you know it still all averages out. You're still getting the same. It's just uh, you know less fluid ounces, I guess. Less yeah. fluid ounces, yeah. alcohol. You're still getting the same amount of alcohol. It's like drinking wine. Best way to uh, compare it, you know, everybody knows that you get about six ounces in a glass of wine, uh, and and because the alcohol content is way up there, in right? Wine, so that's that's the difference between the two. Uh, Kirk, uh, real quick, I know a lot of our listeners out there will have fun with this. Uh, do you remember your first, um, your dad's first draft beer when you went into the pool hall or bar with your dad? Do you remember what they drank out of back in the day? It was a twelve ounce glass of beer, yeah, and that's all they get. It's funny how we have slits <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's funny how that we we've gotten to a 16 ounce glass actually uh, throughout the years because it always used to be a, a lot smaller glass and obviously that was for for profit reasons but it, it was a 12 ounces glass. Twenty five cents. I always remember my dad throwing up on the bar. Twenty five yep. cents for a, for a twelve well, ounce glass of beer. Why would it be any different? It's a twelve ounce can. Why did we get to a sixteen ounce glass? Exactly. Which is kind of you know James when we look at the uh, the bomber. 
how did we get from a 12 ounce bottle right. to a 22 ounce bottle? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's changing, and I like seeing it. This is fun for me, as you guys know. I'm new to this, so it's exciting, and uh, we're making beer drinking great again. All right, before we go, guys, I want to talk about an event that our radio stations are putting on here at Town Square Media, the Cedar Rapids Beer Summit in March. All the information is on krna.com. You were there last year. What's one takeaway for you, Kirk, from the Cedar Rapids Beer Summit? Oh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, that was my first time there, obviously. And hundred and, beers uh, on tap. Hundred beers on tap. I think I probably had ninety five. <laughs> um, no, but you know, there's just a great variety. I mean, everything from a jalapeno infused beer to peanut butter to uh, great IPAs and lagers and porters and stouts and everything. Um, there was great variety, and uh, I expect it's probably going to even be better this year. Yeah, it's such a good place just to go and sample all the different beers. So again, all the information right here on this website, ninety four one K R. RNA.com. Guys, as always, thanks for joining me. Next week, we'll do this again. Any ideas, Drew, on what beer we'll be sampling next week? Do you think we got time for a quick question? Uh, real quick, yeah, real quick. Real quick. And, um, he asked about chilled glasses. Terry uh, asked about chilled glasses. Okay. Am I supposed to drink craft beer in a chilled glass? Great question. Uh, the answer is uh, what what the brewers will tell you is no. Uh, you'll you'll want to make sure that your glass is at room temperature because you get all the flavor and it's not, uh, not masked by any moisture. Right, gotcha. All right, guys, thank you so much. We're going to continue drinking our Supa Dippa Sumo, something like that anyway. It's Craft 101 with James, Drew, and Kirk.